everybody. It is Melissa Buttermilk uh, from the studio here in Columbus, Ohio with the Outer Belt and my friends. Uh, go ahead. Eric. Jerry. Patrick. Chili. And we have some exciting stories to share today. And first and foremost, I'm going to talk about the weather because that just seems to be the way we start. Uh, the weather has gone from summer hot blazing 90 something down to mid 70s and it was just a really lovely weekend uh, over Labor Day and um, Vince and I took advantage of that and we got out on Sunday and took ourselves about an hour hour and a half drive on our motorcycle and went somewhere new um, I can actually say I've been to Harlem <laughs> that's so funny Harlem Ohio Did you go to the Apollo oh ah! Harlem Ohio um should you have blinked, you would have missed the only stop sign in, I guess, what was their town. But uh, it was really fun. We went out, we explored, we saw some some new sites, and uh, just kind of out and back. It was, it was, I had fun. It's a good time. Yeah, the weather was perfect was for riding. It was, nice. it was like really 77. Nice. There was a, there was a breeze, um, but yeah, we had a good time this weekend uh, of Labor Day weekend, and got to hang out with with you and and uh, Eric. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. You were riding on a motorcycle. Yeah. And there was a breeze. There was quite a breeze. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be riding the any motorcycle? time you ever ride the no, motorcycle? No, there's, there's, there's like there a, was a cross crosswind. breeze. Cross there was a crosswind. Wind. Yeah. So oh. you cross a couple of, of long stretches or bridges over a couple of different rivers. Mm -hmm. And when you have that wide open and the breeze comes down and hits you, it kind of affects the way you ride a little bit. Is yeah. it scary? No, it's not scary. Sometimes it feels like it's going to pop my helmet it, off. It, do, it well, does. If, if if you turn your head a certain way, yeah, it'll catch the wind a certain way. But it'll it'll move the bike over in the lane a little bit, and you just adjust. So it's not like drastic, like, oh, we're going to tip over. No. No, you, you just adjust. I know when we were driving truck back in the day, we had some, um, like, a, a really light-duty truck that we don't have anymore. And that thing, if you got in a valley or, or, or crossing some bridges – just so enough wind would push you over, and it was downright scary. You yeah. like had to really jump on the steering wheel and kind of finagle the truck back into place or whatever. But um, that's that's what I imagine. But it's not like that at all. It's not like that at all. No, I used to ride uh, when I was in California. My commute to and from work in the afternoon, going home, uh, I went across an airport. So every, mm. it's open on all on all sides. Yeah, and it was in, in the high desert in California where every afternoon the wind would pick up and blow at 25, 30 miles an hour. So I would ride home turning left the whole way, which meant that I was leaning to the left into the wind to stay straight. Now, when you crossed uh, through the airport, did you tell, like, the air traffic controller? I did. Not to <laughs> let any airplanes go I, at that I, I particular moment? I would call moment? and ask for clearance first okay. before I rode across. As they you would, do. They would grant me clearance. If it was clear, otherwise they'd tell me to hold, hold tight. you know, approach yeah. um, stop sign at, that marker and hold. I could see that being exciting. You're on a motorcycle because you could really like chase an airplane. You could chase an airplane. That'd be cool. I mean, for, until for, they. Not, yeah, not for me. I feel like that's off. a Mission yeah. Impossible movie or something. It feels like it. it. Probably. There, probably two or three of them, let's yeah. be honest, at this point. <laughs> 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 it just was a good weekend. Uh, Labor Day was great. You know, uh, hung out on the back patio with you two, you and you and Eric. And, yep. yep. And um, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was. Quick, it, three day weekend, but it went by quick. It did, it did. We um, it was a, a weird three day weekend for me, if I'm being honest. Okay. As all of y'all know, but but maybe that the audience members know, on Thursday I had a little minor surgery. They pulled out what was essentially the size of like a small strawberry out of my arm, or not my arm, the side of my chest, uh -huh. um, underneath my arm, and uh, then stitched me back together. They said not to worry that. Tylenol and Advil should be fine. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not going to them ever again. Uh, <laughs> those lion. In, mm -mm -mm. And so, no, I uh, I was in quite a lot of pain Thursday night. But by Friday morning, felt great. I'm like, okay, I could do this. Not such a big deal. Stayed on my pain medication. Set my alarm. Made sure I took my pain medication. And it was literally Tylenol and Advil. I didn't get any... Um, codeine, or which makes me sick, so I wouldn't have gotten that anyways. But like any other pain, I didn't get sure. any of that stuff. So, but I stayed on my Tylenol, my Advil. I took my my um, antibiotic as supposed to be, and everything felt good enough that Friday night, uh, well afternoon, we decided, hey, it's Labor Day, 
let's go head out, get some uh, happy hour, hit happy hour up, right? Yeah. I know I didn't want to drink any alcohol, but I would still go hang out and have uh, – the place we were going has this lobster mac and cheese that will make you uh, – not get ma- lobster mac and cheese anywhere else ever again. <laughs> it is outstandingly delicious. So uh, I knew I was going to have a little half half bowl of it, not the whole thing. We, sp- Eric and I split it. Probably f- 30, 45 minutes into that, I just realized it was a mistake. You had overdone it. Uh, yeah, just that quickly. Just that quickly. I was like, oh, this is not good. And it just went downhill quickly after that. And I did my best to hold out. And at, at some point, y'all were like, you need to go home. And so that's what I did. Uh, went home and spent the rest of the night on the couch in pain. Then on Saturday, I I did nothing. I literally felt like someone like I just got in a fight. You ever seen those movies? And the guys on the laying down on the on the street and he's knocked out, but the people are just going crazy and kicking him on the side anyways. And it's like it's in so many movies. Yeah. And then you know, there's always the one person like he's down. Stop kicking him and all that. That's what I felt like happened the night before. I was in so much pain. I didn't want to do anything. It sucked. Hearing how you felt Saturday when you t- when you called Saturday, it made me feel like I made the right decision in not allowing them to use still toes when they were kicking you when you were down. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. You know, carbon um, carbon toes do give a little bit. They do give a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yep. they, they do. So uh, I was happy that I, I actually stopped them. And they were like, why are you stopping us? I said, take your still toes off. Yeah. You know, switch to some soft-toed shoes and then continue to take out your frustration with Patrick. Well, and, <laughs> and I ended up having a couple of days of reprieve and literally just doing nothing, moping around the house. Not even really around the house because I tried not to move as much or as little as I could. And then uh, come Monday, I was starting to get a little start crazy, a little, mm-hmm. you know, like, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm ready to, like, I don't want to go anywhere or do anything. It's funny because that morning, I was talking with Eric, and I was like, well, it's Labor Day. What are your plans? Because in my head, I'm thinking, like, he's going to want to go do something. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, I really don't want to. And he was like, I don't know, might go work on the yard some or, or really just not do anything. And I was like, oh, thank God. I said, because I really don't want to do a single thing. I was feeling good, but I was so scared of getting hurt again. Yeah. I did reach out to y'all at some point and ask what y'all were up to, and you said you were going to go for a ride. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I had already resigned to the fact that I'm going to be watching TV and just chilling the rest of the night. Sure. Late afternoon, you texted and said, hey, do you want to come over and just hang out on the back porch? And you were going to make um, the chicken pizzas, which if you saw, we had on the Outer Belt. It's one of the videos we made. We have um, done that. A few uh, months ago. Do mm-hmm. you need to make more of those videos? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, you said you were going to make those. Yep. And and I was like, you know what? I could, That I can do. Let me go over to their house. Hang on the back porch. Y'all were very hospitable. Thank you so much. Very oh. courteous. Didn't make me get up and do a whole lot. So they ended up being a really fun night. It got cold. It got so cold last, or, or not last night, but Monday Monday night. Yeah. It got so cold. It was like freezing outside. I had brought my coat because I saw that it might get cold. I think Eric had to bundle up and like. He borrowed a coat. A coat. And like, And we were just sitting out there just like hanging out, trying to relax or whatever. And it just got to the point where it was like, all right. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just too cold out the here. The fall chill took over. The fall chill took way over. And I, I had shorts on. I was not prepared to get that cold. So it's like, all right, now I need to start thinking about if it's 75 degrees outside during the day, it's going to be cold at night. I need to start planning yeah. ahead again. It was um, still a good time. But it was it was a great time. The food was amazing as always. <laughs> Those um, are good pizzas. They really were. And uh, leftovers were Damn good. delicious for lunch. Were the they? day after when they were cold. Oh yeah. my goodness! Very good. That's very, very cool. good. Well, I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I just uh, the cold man. I don't know. And then I see t- you know uh, what was it uh, Wednesday Thursday eighty five degrees again. It's like oh my gosh, like it's just hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold and it's just it's the layer season. You it is start off layered or with a coat and by the end of the day you're back into a coat. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, but not midday. Midday, you're probably back yeah. to sh- shirt and shorts. Jerry, how was your Labor Day weekend? It was good. <clears throat> we um, Saturday ran some errands, and Sunday clean house, and then Monday we uh, jumped in my car and took a ride out to Hocking Hills. It's beautiful out there. It's gorgeous. Really. Got to uh, put my car in sport mode and. Oh, geez. Get on some roads and nice. had a little fun. And uh-huh. So do you still have a CDL? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
It, it was a lot of fun. Went on a couple of highways out there that I'd never been on, but I seen online that had like a lot of like bike rides, you know, basically. Yeah. So I was like, okay, that should be fun to take my car on. And uh, we got out and walked around for a while and done a little exploring and stopped off at this restaurant called the Old Dutch, the Old Dutch Family Restaurant. It's oh. Amish cooking. Oh, yeah? Mm. Really? That's How was I it? Say. Oh, my God. <laughs> were, was... you, uh, were you compliant with your uh, diet? Oh, God, no. <laughs> they had these rolls. I, I swear, <laughs> one roll was two times the size of my fist. Oh, nice. Wow. I mean, it was just. Were they soft? Oh, soft and just buttery and like it was just all the food was just good. Don had a uh, open faced turkey sandwich, which is something he loves, and yeah, it yeah. was it was a really good day. Nice. Sounds like, like we need to take a motorcycle ride. Sounds like it does. It's really good, sounds and it wasn't good. expensive at all. It was really reasonable. Re- reasonable so yeah. that's good. And that was down there in Hawking Hills area. Yep. Uh, as soon as you enter into that area, I'll have to look it up and and give you the directions. But sure. yeah, it's. Sure. It was a really, really good day. Nice. Are the fall colors turning down there? There was a few trees that were already starting to turn. We mm-hmm. noticed that. I saw in the news they were talking about um, the weather, the, the 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 leaves changing early this year. And if it feels like it, it shouldn't be changing quite as soon as it is, you're right. It's not supposed to be. But we are having an unprecedented drought. Um, mm-hmm. The last time it was this bad was like 1930, 1931, something like that. Really? Yeah, I saw where this is the third driest um, summer in yeah. Columbus. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I've still not watered the lawn. I don't have a lawn. Yes, you do. I have I have a fire hazard. Eh. We all do at this one. We I do, mean, but really. it's we're not really. we're not having any fires out back. Um, it's supposed to rain at some point. Actually, yeah, it's supposed to rain over the but next it's couple not, weeks, it, but not it's not it's measurable. Storms. It's just storms. It's just a real quick downpour of a little bit of rain and then yep. moves on. Yep, yeah, but it's not long lasting. It's not <sighs> a drench. It's no. not a Stay here for three or four days and just gloom and doom. We don't really get those in Ohio, though, but still, we get yeah. more than this usually. This is crazy dry. Yeah. Um, it really is. Well, you know, we had that El Nino, and now we're in El Nino, and they said it was going to be dry, and boy, they were not lying. No, they were not lying. It's uh, it's crazy that, that, to lying. think that something in the Pacific Ocean can affect us. Sure. And it's not even the Pacific Ocean. I mean, it's down by Ecuador. Like, it's way out there. Yeah. And that's... What's causing us not to have rain? It's just well, bananas. We're supposed to have a cold, wet winter. So at some point, it's going to change, and we'll deal with cold and wet. Well, you know, cold and wet's better than hot and dry, right? Sure. No, I'd rather <laughs> have nobody dry. ever. I'd rather have hot and dry. Uh, yeah. Well, I think we're too woodsy out here to have hot and dry. You're talking about the, the Amish place. I found a, was watching a video on YouTube, and they were talking about this uh, smorgasbord out in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, outside of Philadelphia, and it's the world's largest all-you-can-eat buffet. That kind of sounds like a fun time. Is it ridiculous to drive, you know, eight and a half hours just to go to the world's largest all-you-can-eat buffet? Where do you even Maybe. start or stop? Well, they, they said that a lot of people will actually come in, they'll pay for the breakfast, and then uh, stay for lunch. But if they if they do see you're staying for lunch, you do have to re-up. You have to pay for the lunch one. So Wow. But... That's what a lot of people do, and I'm like, I mean, I guess like if you brought cards and the seats were comfortable, <laughs> you know what I mean? You could take a nice like two hour break, and then it's like I'm gonna go up for some more mashed taters. So I don't know. A couple rounds of skip. And then pole. are you? Oh, sorry. And then are you gonna do the same foods you normally do, or are you gonna try something different out of the smorgasbord? Well, the fried chicken was by far their like. Oh. Everybody was saying the fried chicken's amazing. Sure. Which, so you get a winglet, so you can have space for all the other food. Well, those that look like. Uh, Half chickens. I mean, it was like you know, wow, it looked like like breasts the size of a milk carton. You know what I mean? Like uh, thighs that were gigantic. Legs look like turkey drumsticks. They look like uh, no, we're healthy, not, definitely look like not hitting chicken. the salad bar. You can skip the salad bar on an all you can eat. I don't know. I mean, I like to go and get the like the cheese cubes at the salad bar. So no lettuce. Just we're gonna no lettuce select. filler. Uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah, I ended up getting the buffet at the. This restaurant. Oh, was it a buffet oh. too? It was, yeah. And and I skipped all the salad stuff because I I knew you wanted I to try the good s- exactly. Right. Yeah, but you you and I eat differently. Let me tell you though, I didn't even see the dessert table. Don pointed it out to me, 
And then I was like, okay, I've got to go over there and check it out. Like, it was all, like, homemade, like, Dutch apple pie. Oh, my gosh. Peach pie. I wasn't thinking about Blueberry Amish. pie. Yep. Uh, then they had, you know, like, your chocolate cream, strawberry cream, coconut cream, banana oh. cream. And it was all, like, homemade, like, still in the pie tins, you know, cut it yourself. Yeah. It was all really, really good. Cut it yourself. Yes. See, that would be good because then you could do slithers. You could do, like, yeah, nice slithers. Yeah. Or yeah. you could just take the whole pie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, you know, when you go to Golden Corral or Ryan's or Iron Skillet or some of the other buffets around the country, I find the desserts are usually, like, lacking. They're yeah. usually, like, they kind of phone that in. Yeah. But I would imagine an Amish restaurant, they didn't. I mean, that's what they're known for, right? And, uh, Amish bakeries, that's, like, the thing. Like, the cinnamon Homemade, rolls homemade. And, yeah. 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 Uh, Pastries. Well, it sounds like we definitely have a road trip. Yes. Thanks I for mean, doing the intel for us. Yeah, I, you know it's what an hour and a half away, two yeah. hours. We can take the van. I, I told Don, I was like, it's worth going back. It, yeah, it is. Yeah, Weekly. on the drive is pretty. Yeah. Gorgeous. Did y'all hike anything? We walked around a little bit. We went to like the main area that's got like the welcome center mm-hmm. or yeah. something. We walked a, a little bit, but not much. Am I the yeah. only one who hasn't been out there? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I went. Uh, we had a, a couple drivers. A couple. People used to drive for us. They were uh, really great friends. Um, we still wish them well. They're down in Louisiana. They just got off the road. They don't drive it at all anymore. But um, they ended up getting married in um, Logan, uh, which was kind of right in the middle of Hawking Hill area. They invited us to come down for the wedding, so we did. And it was really cool, beautiful area. They were, like, perched up on top of a hill um, and overlooking the surrounding area and everything for the for the wedding venue and all. It was very, very cool. Mm. So I've kind of, like, seen some of the area. I've just not been to the state park or anything like that. Had a great campfire out there. But it had been raining, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> Our so neighbors had a fire last night. They did. A little one. A little, yeah. a little one, Enough yeah. to s'more roast. Last week we talked about uh, the Highfield history, and I understand we we're going to continue that. I think we're calling this the Highfield origin story. The Highfield origin story. Yeah. Goes along with the whole, you know, Marvel. I like it. That the DC hi- universe. Yeah. So the this the is the story. this is the HCU, the High right. Cinematic Universe. Exactly. Um. <laughs> well, last year week we talked about our first six months out on the road. We're going to pick up with our um, first year as owner operators because as we ended up last time, we said that in May 2013 we bought our first truck. Yes. And. Uh, that truck, right here, 2008 Kenworth T660. It was a uh, factory sleeper, uh, but it did have the studio sleeper on it. Uh, so it was it was the nicest, pretty much the nicest factory sleeper you can get. Caterpillar C13 engine. Now, if you remember from last week, I said that the truck we had we were driving we were driving for Expedia Services. We were driving in a Cat C11, uh, which was bulletproof. You couldn't do anything to it. It was a great engine. Truck ran awesome. Uh, this is C13. This was the same engine that that very first truck we picked up was that made it one whole day with us. Right. And then we had to swap it to a different truck. We figured that was just coincidence, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually, when we were looking at trucks, we had a choice between a, a, an 07 uh, T600 or an 08 T660 from Kenworth, uh, one being the C11, one being the C13. And we actually decided to go with the C13, the 08, because it had a DPF filter on it. And at that time, California was requiring you to have a DPF filter um, to go into their state. If you didn't have it, you couldn't go. So the old C11s, the old T600s, they were no longer California compliant. So we wanted to buy one that we could at least run in and out of California with. Yeah. So that's how we ended up making that decision. This truck was a massive piece of crap. Um, I believe that's the affectionate way of putting it, right, Eric? It was a true blessing. It was a true <laughs> blessing. If you're familiar with Caterpillar engines, it was a twin turbo Ardhead Acert engine. Oh. And they were just absolute junk. It is the reason the C13, 2008 and 2009 C13, C15 is the reason Caterpillar quit making on highway engines. They were so problematic and they cost Caterpillar so much money. That they said, you know what? We're done. Going to stick to tractors. Going to stick to tractors and everything else but. Um, so that was so that was the truck we bought. I'm glad we got it. I'm glad we started our business that way, right? Like you, you can't completely crap on 
what got you where you're at. Sure. However. Yeah, more of our choices. Yeah, however. We didn't have very many of them. No, and, 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 and at the time, we were doing some freight that was going in out of California that we wanted to be able to keep doing. So it wasn't like we just ran it out of our business model. Because back then, and if you remember, uh, Kevin Rutherford was saying at the time, right? California had a business model. I don't know if you were paying attention to trucking back then. Were you? Okay. Um, So back then, he was literally saying, like, these emission systems are terrible for trucks. Don't do it. They're going to cost you a ton of money. Just write that completely out of your business model. And a lot of people did. Uh, But with what we were doing, we really didn't feel that was an option. We didn't want to be limited. Um, And we knew we wanted to buy more trucks, and we didn't want to limit our future contractors. Sure. So we went ahead and got that truck, and we were like, we'll just deal with it and make it work. Uh, the issues started before we even bought the truck. Um, you know, one of those things where you see an ad and it looks great. We go down there, we look at it, and one tire is completely bald. Of course. Um, there was no lift gate on that truck. There was no custom sleeper. So a lot of those little issues didn't exist. Um, that is the nice thing about factory sleepers is they are typically a lot uh, easier to maintain. Sure. Um, had a tri-pack on it, Thermo King tri-pack on it, which was a, a really good... APU, it's a great option. Um, we run Thermo King reefer units. Big fan of Thermo King. Um, but we get there, like I said, one tire's bald, completely bald. Um, there's no fuel in the tanks at all, which when you're buying a used truck or our new truck from a dealership, a lot of times a W2 tank of fuel, fuel. Yeah. Is, is part of the deal. Right. They showed the pictures, showed like all the load bars and straps and everything inside the truck. We get there and there's none of that no, there. Of course. Like just, you know, all that little things like that. Um I want to say we found maybe some paint defects or I don't, little things like that. So we told them, like, eh, you know what? This isn't the right truck for us. And they were like, well, well and I had no experience negotiating with dealerships at that point. So they're like, what don't you like about it? Let us know. So I made a whole list. I, I, I typed it out on Apple Notes on my phone and, and then put in an email and sent it over to them. And they're like, you know what? We'll take care of all that stuff. Not change price. We'll just take everything. Wow. Like, cool. So I get back. You know, one drive tire had been replaced. The one right next to it hadn't. So you got a brand new, you know, 22, 30 seconds right. uh, drive tire next, next to, to a 8, 8 30, 30 seconds <laughs> drive tire. So I'm like, okay, well, whatever. At least it's one less tire I'll have to buy. I'll just buy the other one. No big deal. A few other little things they had taken care of. The truck still had no fuel in it. And they're like, we have it, we have it solved. No worries. Oh. I was like, oh, okay, what's that? You remember this, Eric? I think I do. So they had one truck parked um, parked next to a loading dock, yeah. and they had us drive our truck into the loading dock, so we were lower, and then they siphoned the fuel from the first truck <laughs> into our truck. Oh, my oh, goodness. Really? Awesome. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. They didn't even like, call to get it fueled? No, no, and not even, like, with a pump. I mean, like, a hose... And, and suck real on hard it? on it. And oh, my goodness. I remember the guy that had to start that. He had to suck the oh gas gosh. out of the hose oh and then man. spit it on the ground. <laughs> it, was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was it was a riot. Uh, it was something. <laughs> yeah. So that's our welcome to own truck ownership, right? And then from there, we you know we get the truck, get to bring it back down to Louisiana, got to do all of our titling and registering, which we'd never done before, didn't know anything about it. At that point, it was actually cheaper for us to register everything ourselves. So like the carriers will do that for you if you want them to. You still have to title it, but they'll do all the registration and handle all that paperwork if you want them to. But if you only have one truck, it's it's very expensive if you go that route. It's cheaper if you do it yourself. Now, if you have a bunch of trucks, the carriers will typically cut some money off that and help you out, which is what they do now. And so, like, right now, uh, our carriers actually plate for us. Um, But back then, we were getting started, and if you only have one or two trucks, a lot of times it is cheaper to do it yourself. Wow. So we did did it ourselves, and we're trying to figure it out, and we – you know, go to the DMV, and they're like, no, you don't have this paper, and we had to go back and figure something else out. It was a back and Torture. forth, like crazy. Welcome to the IRP. Oh, man, it was a nightmare. But we finally figured it out. We're able to go run. I'm trying to remember. So we had our truck. It was still sitting in Memphis. And so we left Louisiana, drove up to Memphis, and picked up the truck. They We'd already done all the siphoning of the fuel and all that stuff, right? Because um, it was cheaper to drive a car down to sure. Louisiana, do all the paperwork, and come back than it was to burn the fuel. Um when you only have one truck, you're doing that math. You're like trying to figure out like if this is 
six hundred dollars in fuel, but it's a hundred dollar car rental and forty five dollars in fuel. Well, let's rent a car. Yeah. So that makes sense. Get back. We're moving the truck, ready to go, and we uh, were killing some time and drove out to uh, the mall in Memphis, and we were just doing some shopping, killing some time. It was like a Friday, so we knew there was no chance of getting a load until Monday, and lo and behold, we get a phone call in the middle of the mall saying like, hey, we have this load for you to pick up. It's an immediate pickup. At that point, FedEx was saying you had 30 minutes to get there, if you remember that. like. Yeah. Uh, if you got that call and you accepted it, you had 30 minutes to be there. So Eric and I accepted the load. It goes to Canada. Eric and I are running through the mall like crazy people trying to get back to the truck, jump in the truck, log in, do the hours of service, all the stuff right, and then go straight to the pickup and then get on the road. We were Our first load was in a couple hours to pick up our truck. It was wow. crazy. Wow. I've, it, that almost never happens. Got started that way. Then had... Uh, Two loads back to back. One uh, second load was hazmat. No, second load was to New York City. Third load was hazmat. So we just went ahead and knocked everything out. Canada, <laughs> New York hazmat, all that stuff out. It had a great time in it uh, for a little while. Everything seemed like it was going to be all right. And uh, how long is a little while? A couple months. Oh, okay. A couple months of things being. So we got good. more than three loads in. So we got more than three loads in, and then uh, our first breakdown uh, wasn't really a breakdown. Our Thermo King quit working. Our tri pack quit okay. working. Now, when we bought this thing, it had like 20,000 hours on the, yeah, the so tri pack. It's got some age on it, it was tired. Um, so I think the compressor went out or something. So I remember we brought it to a Thermo King down in, in uh, Florida. And uh, they worked us in, but it was going to be a couple hours. And it was around lunchtime. So Eric and I took off on foot. We found a barbecue restaurant that was like an hour away uh, by foot. So wow. we walked to the barbecue restaurant, and we're in the middle of a swamp land, and there's, like, gators around and stuff, and we're just walk over to the barbecue place and ate, and, and they got the call there. And then we couldn't figure out how to pay for it because, <laughs> again, when you buy your own truck, they don't give you a, a lesson on how to do all this stuff. So we knew we had, like, the fuel card, and we knew that we had more money on the fuel card, which we could use for maintenance, but we didn't know how to get that money to the vendor. So we're like at the barbecue restaurant eating and I'm on the phone with, uh, I thought we were working with expert services still. So I'm on the phone with expert services and I'm like, so how do we do this exactly? Like, how do we get the money from here to them? And, and what do we like just trying to work all that stuff out? Like it was now it seems crazy, but when you don't know, you don't, you know. don't know. Yeah. So going through all that and then we're like, all right, cool. Got that resolved. Got them paid. Learned how to use that account properly. We're golden. And then the Caterpillar C13 Art Head shows its true colors. Oh no! So once we finally got, I will, I will, I will speed up real quick and say, the Art Head is a um, like a seventh injector with a spark plug on it. They they take diesel and they throw it into the exhaust, and then they light this little area combustion chamber and they actually make your exhaust superheated so even hotter than it is coming out of the engine and what that does is helps uh the diesel particulate filter capture all the particulates and lets only the clean air come out well, that sounds complicated it is and it's not worth a crap <laughs> um so eventually we learn the secret is every year you just replace it whether you think you need it or not just like you're doing an oil change just once a year replace it yes sir is this during the time, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they have just the DPF filter like this was before the fuel? Yes, there was the, no DEF. No DEF. There okay. was no diesel yeah. exhaust fluid in this. My thing. truck was the same way. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and some were okay. Like we had uh, a truck we'll get to later uh, that was a DPF as well, but it didn't have an art head. Uh, it was a Mercedes Benz engine, and that thing was flawless. Um, Will so you this spell was just that a, word? Uh, you're saying it, but I just want to make sure. Yeah. A R D. Oh, just A R D. Mm -hmm. Making sure it didn't have an H on it. Nope. Okay. Ard head. Ard head. And um, so the first time it breaks down, Eric and I were in Albuquerque. And uh, we were on our way to pick up a load. And they, um, we didn't make it there to pick it up. We broke down before we got there. So they actually um, towed us from 
Oh, help me out here. Okay, so in New Mexico, east of Albuquerque, is it Santa Rosa? That sounds right. Yes, it does sound right. And there's like a truck stop there, but it's not a name brand one. It's an off. It's a it's a mom and pop independent truck stop. Is it a well known independent truck stop out I there? I think so. Yeah, I can't think of the name of the place, but I know what you're talking about. Um. Uh, um anyways, so they they we were broke down there. And they picked towed us from there and brought us all the way into Albuquerque. Crazy expensive tow. Because um, if you know, coming from east into Albuquerque, you've got that whole mountain you got to mm-hmm. go over and everything. And Tucumcari and Santa Rosa. Yeah. I don't remember which. It was one of those two. I don't remember which yep. one. So they tow us in, and we get to the Kenworth dealership. And uh might have been a cat dealership we got brought to. That was the nice thing about having Caterpillar engine in a Kenworth truck is you had two different places you could go, either Caterpillar or a Kenworth. Nice. So we bring it to one of the two dealerships, and um, they get to working on it, and Eric and I check into a hotel. Uh, they had, like, just the you know, listed hotels inside the char- uh, inside the, uh, shop, shop, and uh, they had one that the guy recommended, and it was a good little haul away. It was in Old Town, Albuquerque, and it was probably 30 minutes away from the dealership, or from the shop. Called the guy, and he's like, oh, send someone out to come pick you up. I'm like, cool. From the hotel? From the hotel. They had a shuttle. Come to find out, the guy that ran the shuttle owns the hotel. It's that kind of small yeah. mom and pop. Right. I think it was in a condo lodge. Uh, but it had really good reviews. Um, and so we were, we were pretty comfortable with it. So we got there. This was pre-hotels.com before all that stuff, right? Yeah. Back, back then, you had to go to, like, Priceline or, or right. you had to go to, uh, like, choicehotels.com and book directly through them. And his rate was better than theirs. Uh, so we went there. Uh, nice place, uh, indoor swimming pool, which was great. I remember going there and like actually going swimming a couple times. Wow! But even better was it was right next to Old Town Albuquerque. Now it's like the original Mission, right? Like the original 150 year old place that all the shops are Pueblo style shops, and it's uh, like crafty shops and cafes and really cool, funky vibes. Oh, how fun. Like it was a lot of fun. And I remember we went to one place, a coffee shop. Remember the coffee shop, Eric? Mm -hmm. Freaking coffee came out in a bowl that looked like a soup bowl. (laughs) And did it have a heart on it? What did it have on it? I think they did the heart or something in there. I don't remember what was on it, but I remember it only almost took two hands to hold. It was ridiculous. And I didn't get a coffee. I got got an espresso like I normally get. And you were like, oh, my gosh, you have to try this. So I even tried it, and it was outstanding. Um Having a blast, and and I th- that's when we I think we started taking the name uh, and calling them breakdown cations during that trip. Breakdown cations. Yep, because it was like, all right, we're broke down, but we're trying to make the best of it. You know, we're not just sitting in the hotel room losing our mind. We're trying to uh, enjoy what we can out of you know something we don't want to be a, a part of, like making the best out of a bad situation. Sure, that was really successful, and and, and they got the truck fixed. And the guy brought us back, and everything was great. Really enjoyed it. And that repair lasted, like, three or four months. Maybe not even that long. Uh, (laughs) And then we broke down again uh, in Buffalo. Same problem? Same problem. Oh. So before we learned, you need to go on our schedule. Yes. So this one, we... uh, we broke down in, in Buffalo, got towed to the Kenworth. Now, this one was really weird. So on this trip, we actually got towed to, and right there, that's a picture of the truck getting towed. Crazy. So we actually got towed to, we were loaded, and we got towed to the GM engine manufacturer there in, outside of Buffalo. Uh, we, had a, we had one pallet of pistons. And... Uh, had to come off. Yeah, had to come off, so they, they just towed us there and had us unloaded there instead of trying to do another swap of another truck. Sure. Well, here's the problem. That particular GM plant, well, I guess all of them, are union. And that particular one, part of their union contract says they will not unload a truck that didn't drive in under its own power. Oh, for wow. Pete's sake. Yes. Wow. So they wouldn't unload us. And so the managers in their, like not managers, but like the, the upper, upper managers the in their suits, people in their literal, like, I was going to say Armani, but probably Dillard's suits. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get a pallet jack and like walk inside because we're not allowed to touch the truck because it's right. a union truck, yeah. our union shop. 
So they actually go in there with their pallet jacks, and they together pallet it uh, or lift it up and pull it out. And then once it's off, then the, the union guys could touch it. Oh, my goodness. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Then the guys towed us over to Kenworth, and we went and stayed at a hotel. We were, I think we rented a car in that time, and, and uh, it was middle went, of winter. So that time. Go to Niagara? Not that time. So that time we ended up going to the mall and just hanging around in Buffalo. And the cool thing about that mall is they had an indoor go-kart track. Like, they actually had, like, a racetrack inside the mall. Right. That's pretty cool. Very cool, right? And it makes sense because Buffalo gets cold, tons of snow, too, yeah. and cold and tons of snow. Yeah. So this could be run all year long. Um, and really just had a pretty good time there. That was a pretty quick fi- fix. We were only down for a couple days. Um and it wasn't the art head. It was when they had replaced the art head, they didn't replace the injector. Oh. So all they had to do was replace the injector. Okay. So we're out running. You break guess down what, again? Guess what happens again? You break down. <laughs> how many months did you get in between? Not long. It wasn't long <laughs> at all. And we broke down again. This time the sh- we were at a Caterpillar of the shop. Got us in and out. No big deal. We were out running a little bit longer and broke down again. Oh. This time we broke down in San Di- Antonio, Texas. And Holt Caterpillar in San Antonio got our truck. We ended up getting a hotel um, in near, not in, but near downtown San Antonio. Uh, at that point, I discovered Hotwire. Okay. Oh. Hotwire.com. And so I was going online because we broke down so much, I started learning things. <laughs> so we, we, I went on there and, and found a hotel for like $53 a night, and it got us really close to downtown, or in downtown uh, San Antonio, and we were able to just walk over to the Riverwalk. Oh, cool! And we—that's why we did our our breakdown cation that time was at the Riverwalk in San Antonio. Which have, have y'all been to the Riverwalk in San yes. Antonio? Have you? No, it was good. It's yeah. really fun. It's it's really cool. The, the river makes like a giant square in downtown San Antonio, and it's below grade, right? Like mm-hmm. it's it's kind it of is. it's like a floor down, if you can imagine, yeah. from the main street. And they got lush trees, and it's all well manicured, and there's restaurants and shops, yep, and there's there a big was. big mall on one corner of it. And it's a fun way to, like, kill a couple nights walking around and, and seeing things. Um, I know we've been – oh, it was that trip, actually. And they, we went to the piano bar they had. I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember the name of it either. Bar? But there was – it's a dueling piano bar <coughs> there. It made um, it Howl at the Moon. Yeah. How, was it Howl at the Moon? I think, I think, it, was I think it was Howl at the Moon. moon. So we went to that piano bar and had a great time. Like, again, just how do you make the best of a bad situation? Because yeah. now at this point, we're pissed. I mean, we'd been broke down for the same issue four times. A couple days later, Holt calls us, gets out of the shop. They replaced the art head under warranty. So the art head had gone bad again. Okay. Oh, wow. Replaced under warranty, replaced the injection uh, injector, and replace the combustion tube. So all we had to pay for was a combustion tube, but everything else was covered under warranty. Got us back on the road. That being said, they actually fixed us. So replacing all of that actually um, put us in a spot where we were we were good, good to, to go. go. We didn't know that. Because hindsight's twenty twenty. Sure. We were terrified of this truck. So every time we were driving somewhere, we're just like, please don't break down. Please don't break down. Please don't break down. Ended up in Washington State. Got a load offer to Alaska. And I know, Jerry, you've done the Alaska load. Mm-hmm. They call you and they say, we have a blank check. What will it take for you to go to Alaska? Pretty much. And we said, nothing. I, I won't do it. Because we had broke down so many times oh. with the exact same issue that we were like, we just can't take the risk. I don't know what a tow in Alaska, a tow in Canada would be. Like, that'd be a nightmare. If it's even possible. If it's, yeah, being in yeah. the middle of all that and then have it. So we, we passed on it entirely. Again, in hindsight, the truck never broke down again. Oh. Like from that point, Holt was the one that told us every year replace the art head and everything, and we did, and never had an issue with that again. Like so, so frustrating. So we missed out on Alaska. We didn't have to, but we were so scared of the truck. Yeah, as you should be. We didn't know what to do. So, and that was our only opportunity to go to Alaska, and we missed it. And again, hindsight's twenty twenty. Hindsight's twenty twenty. You could have broke down. Could have broken down, was, didn't know what was going on, and was very nervous, been different. very different. So yeah. um, we actually... Was there a point where you thought you were going to throw your hands up and towel in? And There was. So uh, about a year in, 
we were pretty frustrated with the truck with the truck and so we actually reached out to the dealership and said hey we really we see you have some other trucks in your lot we would be very interested in trading this thing in and buying another truck right like we're not going to try to do whatever we we want to keep in business we're not throwing our hands in the in the towel or in the, Throwing hands up and, and getting out of the business. Sure. We just need a different truck. Right. Talked with them and, and kind of explained our situation. They said, you know, we, we can't take it back on trade. That's not our dealership's model. Um, but what we can do is if you want to, you can buy another truck. Because two trucks running is a little safer of model. If you have if you have people to, to drive it, two trucks driving is a little safer because when one's down, you can kind of pay for the other. Right? Ah. So we're like... All right, well, it's something we want to do anyways is 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 have a fleet of trucks. So this does go towards that particular uh, goal. And at that point, we had pretty much knocked most of the issues out of that truck, and we were doing decent. Still nervous, but, but doing decent. Um, and so they invited us out for an event they were doing in uh, May of – or April of 2014. And uh, we went out there. And they showed us a truck, and we were kind of the only ones interested in it. And so we uh, made an offer and ended up buying that particular truck. Wow. And that brought us to two units. That was our first year driving. Wow. Uh, That'd be frustrating. I, I could see... It was scary. Parking it and walking away, or I mean, how frustrating. Yeah, it was. it was frustrating. It was scary. We... You know, spent a ton of money because we had to put a big down payment on it, and then we got this big loan that we didn't know. You know, we were high risk and all this stuff, so like we're paying a good size interest rate, and just the not knowing, and then the constant breakdowns is the lost revenue and the additional cost of repairing the truck and all this stuff. Like, and you're still was, paying the note while the truck's in the shop. You're still paying the note while the truck's in the shop. Still paying the insurance. Still paying the Qualcomm fees. Now we're paying for our own hotel hotel stays, right. our food, everything. So it, it was a lot of, like, we made more money, sure, because we owned the truck, but it was a lot more expense because of cause the constant breakdowns. Right, yeah. And so um, getting the truck fixed, that truck, we did actually end up a couple years, like three years later. I will go ahead and speed up and say we had to have the entire engine rebuilt. Um, and so we did that and ran it for another year, and then we sold it. Wow. So it's no longer in our fleet, but we did actually build the uh, rebuild the engine. Um, to, to extend its life a little bit longer, and and then send it on its way. It was it was it was scary. That first year was wow, what a risk. It was, and and I it, it definitely opened my eyes to like as an owner operator, it's such a high risk, such a high risk, and I understand now why so many owner operators don't make it. Oh, I imagine. And it was only because Eric's. You know, our CFO, and he is extremely conservative with the money. And we lived in that truck. We actually, during that time, once we bought that truck, we actually, um, we had two houses at that point, Eric's house and my house. And we put both of them up for rent and uh, sold all of the furniture, sold everything. If it couldn't, sold our vehicles. Sold our vehicles. If it couldn't be stored safely, and by that I mean like in South Louisiana, it's very humid. So if you store something in a, uh, like, wood furniture in a storage unit, if it's not climate controlled, it's going to warp and and sure. it'd be trashed. Oh. So if it couldn't be stored safely, then we just sold it. So we got rid of a lot of stuff. Sure. Um, we kept, uh, like, I, had a, I have a metal and glass shelving unit. We kept that. Like, there's no risk there, right? It's not going to get hot and, and warp. Um we kept knickknacks that were personal that you, you know, the life mementos and stuff sure. that you don't want to lose. Kept a bunch of that stuff. But everything else went fire cell. Just got rid of everything. And we lived on the truck. And we came back to Baton Rouge. Uh, we'd see our families. Um, a lot of times we'd park uh, in Denham Springs, Louisiana. If y'all know there's a pilot there. It's a ratty, terrible, nasty pilot. <laughs> we would park there. And a lot of times my dad would, and mom and dad would come over and they would drop us off one of their vehicles. And we'd have that to drive around. Or... If they needed both vehicles, we'd rent a car at Enterprise, and uh, that would be how we'd get around. But we'd still sleep and live in that truck. Um, and that's how we got started. We did that for uh, a while. Um, how long were you in that truck for? I don't want to speed your story up, but just curious. We will talk about that next week. Fantastic. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, because buying that second truck, a lot of things changed. Yeah. 
Uh, How many years total, though? I know you could answer me that because you said you sold it after so you we sold. It. We had that truck for four years. Four. Four okay. years. Yep. Okay. And then got rid of it. Yeah. No. Yes, four years. That's right. Okay. Because we paid the loan off and then we sold it. Yep. And that was a four-year loan. Okay. It's funny. The things you use in your mind to, like, help yeah. you remember things. Yeah. That's one of them. Wow. But uh, we sold that thing with uh, 800 or 900,000 miles on it. Almost. It was just under 900,000 miles. We put a good amount of work on it. All the things you had to learn for, like, a first timer, like you said, the EFS card and how to get the money from point A to point B or, absolutely, you know, uh, as a bigger company now with employees, I think you make that pretty streamlined and easy with the maintenance guys and yeah, to abs- pay for things. Absolutely. And and we don't even use some of those original companies. Like, the original company was T-Check. Everything was phone-based. Today we use EFS, which is... Um, internet based, yeah. you know, like the tolls. What do you do for tolls? We have Best Pass now, which covers every toll in the nation, except for like a very few odd and in ones. Um, back then, you had to have five trucks to buy a Best Pass. So, Ooh. yeah, so we actually like had to grow into that. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. there were just a bunch of little things. Um, we used to send out the the envelope or the uh, the zipper pouch. You know, like the the banker's zipper yeah. pouch right. with hundred dollars or something like that cash in there, and they'd have to send us the receipts, and then whenever that emptied out, then we would had to issue them a new um, T check to be able to get more money to fill that up. Like that was for tolls. That's that's how it was way back in the day. You've had to do something like that, didn't you, when you were driving? Because your toll well, transponder didn't cover everything. No, it didn't. Especially not California or Texas. I always worked on the sixty forty split there, where I got sixty percent and I paid fuel. And tolls. And tolls. So gotcha. the T-check card was mine. All the money that went on there because FedEx would give you 45. 40, 45% at the start yeah. of the load. So as soon as we picked up the load and did our departure call, as we were pulling out, whoever was in the passenger seat called it in and got our 45% and all that money was mine. Yeah. So. I always thought that was crazy that they did it that way um, because our fuel program that we were using, it paid the fuel once you delivered your load. Which means we also had to self fund those first <laughs> first tanks of diesel because oh, we didn't wow. have oh, any money. Oh, you just weren't going account. around siphoning? No, we were. <laughs> that was, no, that was the one and done at the dealership, and we didn't do that. The dealership did. <laughs> I've I talked to Fed. I've talked to so many owners, and I know you experienced it too, where you get a load, they upload to your fuel card, and the f- load cancels, and then talking to FedEx about what happened when people had already used that money. And just all the insanity that came with that, I just that I, blew me away that FedEx did that. I never ran into that problem though, because we would always have the freight on the truck before I did the advance. And if something happened to where we broke down and lost the, in the oh, middle that's of the right, because you had to request it back then, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. You had to request on the C Link. Yeah. And you could not request it until you did your departure call. See, with our fuel program, it was automatic. So as soon as you sent your proof of delivery in, it automatically went in. And if you were even yeah. a half a cent off on the C link, it would not give you the money. Wow. Like it would, it, you would always have to look at the decimals and, and try to get <laughs> as close as you can. Cause that was my money. I didn't want that going to the owner. So I wanted as much as I could get every penny counted. Cause that went to my pocket, you know? Right. Um, wow. Like all the T check. I, I was in charge of the, all that. Like every week we had to, um, reconcile it. And... Yeah. M- me and my co-driver at the time, we would split everything. We had to make sure we left enough money on there for fuel and, and all that stuff, and we would write ourselves T-checks and deposit it into our checking account. Man, I've talked to Boy, so those are many, the days. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I've talked to so many fleet owners who had that model back then because pretty much now almost nobody does, um, and it's because so many of them talked about irresponsible mm. teams. Like, you get that money upload, we deposit all of it into our account, and then, oh, we have to deadhead 600 miles to pick up our next load? Well, the truck's on a quarter tank of diesel. Yep. How are we going to get there? And so the fleet owner ended up loaning them money and then having to get it back. And, every, and it was a disaster. Oh. It's a lot of fleet owners. That was very, very, very common back in the day. And it's completely changed now because of that stuff. I bet. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so for us, when we bought our truck, that was our first time paying for fuel. So we had to learn all that stuff and then learn where to get fuel. And I tell you, the first year, we were very like, ah, oh, if Pilot's close and convenient, we'll get it at Pilot. If Love's is convenient, we'll get it at Love's. If TA's convenient, we'll get it at TA. Mm. Because we didn't really understand. We knew they had a fuel discount, but we, we 
what's two or three pennies, right? Like, who cares? And then we, it, it literally was our, into a year, and they were like, you know, it's like 60 cents to a dollar a gallon. It's like, oh, that's huge. So you're telling me every single fill up is between 50 to $100 savings by using Loves? Wow. Every single fill up. So that adds up. That adds up fast. So a lot of learning on our end. Um, FedEx uses the, uh, they, they're partnered with TA. Yes. Their biggest discount. So we would actually have a sheet of every single TA in the nation, and we had a phone number that we would call, and along our route, we would call all the TAs that we knew that we would be within stopping distance of, and we would find out which one had the biggest discount because they were all different. Yes. And so once we figured that out, then we knew whoever was getting up to drive, okay, this is going to be your fuel stop, this is going to be your fuel stop. Because it could be, just like you said, anywhere from $0.42 cents off to $0.70 cents off, so... Were you yeah, using, like, the quarter system to make your phone calls, or did you have cell phones in? Uh, I had a cell phone back then, but it was way before iPhones or anything. It was a regular old flip phone. Okay. D- dumb phone. But, yeah, we would sit there, and I'd make the phone calls. And wow. I had to do that on every TA to find out who had the cheapest, because you didn't know. Oh, that's rough. I like, um, so we don't use Panther's fuel discount system. Uh, but every single day, Panther it sends an email sends out. An email, yeah. I get it. Of the, okay, of the fuel <laughs> oh, discounts. Right. Yep. So you can quickly just see, like, all right, along my way, here's this. And TA Petro, they're tricky. Like you said, the, the discounts do vary quite a bit. At Love's, they vary a little bit. Not a, a lot, but it does vary from location to location because it's based on when did they buy their diesel and all that stuff, right? What refiner are they getting from, et cetera. But for the most part, they're pretty close to each other. TA has franchise stores, and those fa- franchise TAs and those franchise Petros give you, like, a nickel as opposed to a regular discount, which would give you 35 to 40 or 50 cents. Um, I can think of the classic example I've always used was a- outside of um, Kansas City. Is it the Kinley 95? No, not the Kinley. I'm sorry. The uh, Jop 70 is not Joplin. It's Highway 80. No, it's on I-70 heading to Kansas City. What is Oak Grove? Is it the Oak Grove 70? Yeah. Oak Grove 70 that's right there. Um, Right across, it's a Petro right across the street from it. It's a TA. The TA is corporate owned, gives you a good discount. The 70, which is Iowa 80 owned, gives you a nickel. Ooh. But you wouldn't know that because the retail prices are the exact same. And if you're just thinking like, well, I get a TA Petro discount... Let me go to this one because it's a nicer store, but it's actually a franchise. They don't give you that discount. Wow. So TA, it, but TA and Petro, they're not always that obvious. Sometimes it just looks like a TA, but it's really Jim Bob's TA. So, oh. you know, it, 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 that, that, was, that one's really tricky with TA Petro because I did catch some of that stuff once we started actually paying attention. Because sometimes TA fuel is the same price as Love's. And so I know some of our teams like to get TA when they can. Not so much now, but definitely back in the day when TA had nicer showers. Mm-hmm. Um, these days, I think it's completely flipped the opposite direction. Loves has the nicer showers. Um, but back then, you would get teams that would mostly fill up at Loves, and then they would grab a TA fill up here and again to get the nicer showers. Um, nice. So they would pay attention to those prices. But that's, that's yeah, gone my, away. My trucking days was uh, only TA back then, before they bought out Petro and oh, they yeah. merged. So... Yeah, it was a lot different to only go to TA and the showers, like you said. And yeah. and I remember whenever they did merge, we were just so elated and excited because we were just like, yes, there's like so many more places we can stop. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> TA, TA by itself is a small. Yeah. It's pretty small. TA Petro is a good size, but TA period, they're pretty small. And, and the Petros, I don't, again, by the time I came around, it wasn't this way anymore, but. The Petro travel plazas are massive. If you walk into a Petro, if, you, if you've if you never driven or really paid attention, you go into a Petro, a lot of the older Petros are huge. Yeah. Yeah. They have, like, hallways. They almost feel like a mall on the inside. Now it's mostly nothing. It's mostly vacant. But back in the day, those used to be, like, barbershops yep. and and CB radio places and, and – Way better food. Way better food mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. So the, the Petros used to be – Super, super nice. Uh, like basically a trucker mall that you can get stuff done. Yeah. Um, not so much anymore. 
it's kind of gone away, but... Um, Are they the ones that have the chapels outside? What was the ones a that lot of them do, yeah. Yeah. had yeah. the chapel? And where you can get your DOT medical card here. They always have like <laughs> yeah. a trailer outside. TA and Petra mostly have those little uh, chapels outside. Yeah. I always like those because they always had those old like GMC Astro cab over trucks and stuff from like 74. And, you know, you look at the thing and you're like, that's pretty, but there's no way that engine will crank if you go. You go try it. Well, these days it's just the trailer. There's no longer a tractor attached to it. And they get rid of the tractors? Yeah, it's just a trailer. (laughs) They're like, they probably realize all those tractors are collector's items now. exactly. And each one is like 100 grand sitting there. They could sell (laughs) them all off. Sell them them and do the Lord's work with the money. Do the Lord's work. It just, it's a different time and era for sure. I mean, even your era, you know, you're talking a T check and dialing a zillion phone numbers to find cheapest fuel and... Just very different in in a very short period of time. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I think back to being a kid. Uh, I remember going. My dad's best friend and and uh, was Benny. We went to high school together, and uh, Benny became a truck driver. Going to the pilot in Denham Springs uh, back in the early '90s. That was an old Freightliner cab over. Like I remember sitting on the hump. Yeah. Uh, You've talked about that truck. Freezing cold, like it's so cold in there. Uh, but anyways. Going into the pilot, and a lot of times you still see them. The backside of the old pilots, a lot of them have like a glass domed, like atrium look- looking area with some tables set mm-hmm. up. Um, and now they usually have just trash back there or it's overflow stock and right. whatever. But that used to be, you might, I don't know if you remember this or not, Jerry, used to be where they had the tables set up, and each table had a, had a phone. Oh, yeah. And that's where independent truck drivers would. Book their loads. Yeah. And I remember him talking about, like, going into the, there and saying, I'm not leaving this station until I get a dollar a mile. <laughs> because back then, that was really good money. Yeah. Um, and so that was his, like, I need a dollar a mile. And he would stay by that phone. He'd drink coffee. Other people would be sitting there talking, <laughs> chatting with them, you know. It was real community-based. And, um, you know, now those don't exist anymore. Uh, or if you ever do go to a truck stop and you're like, why is there a... A phone outlet, not a phone, but a phone outlet at every yeah. table. It's a remnant of that yeah. that, that world. Um, when I first started driving, I didn't have a cell phone, and I I was just like my mom. We would buy the prepaid phone cards, yeah. and so that way you could sit there at your dinner table or whatever and make your phone calls and call home and talk to everybody. And wow, technology, love it. Yeah, I always had the phone, but when we did start driving, I had the. It, the nights and weekend plan, you know, that was free. So I remember, like, did a lot of phone calls at night, and during the day it was strictly work. Mm-hmm. But that's all changed now. Nights and weekends. Absolutely. I remember or, that plan. Or their friends and family. You had a list no. of, like, five people that you could call any time. We did have the, the friends and family was out by by 2012. I think friends and family was already out. So <laughs> I had that. I could call my mom, and I could call a couple other people. But Were you on that plan? Nights and weekends, Vincent? Yeah. yeah, I remember being like I always. So I bought an iPhone when they first came out in 2007, and I'd always been on on that kind of situation. Eric had a prepaid phone when we went out on the road. His he every month he paid his forty dollars or whatever it was, and kept his phone going that way. And I'd never had a phone like that. I'd only ever had a contract phone. So I remember even just being out on the road when we first got started, like just between him and I. That being different. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, back then, prepaid phones were like, I don't know, like, they work some places and not others, and it's kind of a pain. And now the prepaid phones are actually nice. What Mint Mobile and all these other companies are doing is night and day better than what it used to be. Sure. So sure. it's it's very interesting to see how that, that end of the industry has changed so much and, and really made it a lot easier and better for drivers out there. Same with, I think, the chapels. I don't think the chapels... And the truck stops are as prevalent anymore because a lot of people that do want to have worship on Sunday morning can do it from their phone, from their laptop. Yeah, most churches are streaming yeah. live, so you can just get your home church. Absolutely. I get it. Yeah, I see it on Sunday, like Sunday when I'm strolling through Facebook. I'll see like three or four people I know, like your kid's one of them, uh, but other people I know that they're posting their church's sermons and, live and services. Yep, yep, yep on, for on Sunday there. service. So it's not nearly as... Um, 
confined or, or, or restrained as it used to be. Now yeah. there's lots of options. Yeah. So I'm curious, are the Amazon boxes becoming more and more prevalent at truck stops? Oh, they yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. They really are. I knew they were starting when we got off the road, but like very few. Yeah, they, they really are. There's tons of them. I wonder if that's one of the reasons. I mean, I'm sure it's a contributing factor to why the full service truck stops kind of disappearing slowly. Because you can just have stuff shipped sure. there and pick it up. Interesting. Well, and you also have Uber. Like, you can take an Uber and go get yourself a haircut, True. right? Yeah. As opposed to going in and getting the haircut. Yeah, absolutely. You're not you're not stuck to that one person selling $35 haircuts. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to hear it, too. I have to say. Like, I've not he- heard a lot of this, so I enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, well, I look forward to talking more and more about it as we go. We have, uh, we're only in 2014. We still have a decade to get through. Wow. <laughs> That should take us tonight at least, what, 10 more episodes? At least 10 more years. 10 more years. <laughs> <laughs> a decade. So, wow. Lots of things coming, y'all. We, uh, we're we just now starting our fleet. I mean, we already bought one truck, and we were owner-operators, and next week we become fleet owners. And that's a whole new can of wax. <laughs> <laughs> it gets exciting now. A little teaser. We've had to replace more than one engine. We've got an interesting story on why we had to do the second one. Yeah. Wow. So that, uh, that was not a mechanical. No, that was issue not a mechanical from issue. That, dealer. that was um that was, that was an, a personal was issue. An ID ten T problem. <laughs> so um <laughs> it was not me and it was not Patrick, I will say that. Yeah, no. It was fun times back then. But anyways, uh if there's anything else y'all want to hear about, talk about. Yeah. Let us know. Leave a comment down below. Shoot us an email at the outer belt podcast at gmail.com. Which is again the the outer belt podcast at gmail.com. And what happens if they send an email there? Um somebody will respond to the email. I don't have access to the email, but somebody will. Somebody will hmm. respond. We, we need leave to look, comments. We need to look into that, don't we? <laughs> Someone will respond. Go put up that email address. You can text live. Thirty-seven emails. Where can you text live from? If you are listening to the audio version of this podcast, there is a text link down in the show notes. So click that, and uh, that will go to me, and I'll respond to you. Nice. Leave a comment down below. Hit thumbs up. Thumbs down. Subscribe if you would like to hear more. Share this to all your friends and family. Uh, It's a lot of great information out there. Absolutely, and it's something we've requested. People want to know a little more about us, more how we got to work where we are i think it, if you're a current uh contractor driver with high film it's a little bit of a behind the scenes of why we do the things we do um if you're not and you're curious how we got where we're at or you're another fleet owner and you're going like hey how do they have as many tricks as they do here's the story we're giving you all the data blood sweat tears and art heads <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's been a fun story it's been a fun ride and uh you know we don't really get a chance to talk about this part of our business too, too much. So it's kind of fun reliving these old memories. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for everything y'all do. Everybody, y'all stay safe out there. Make good decisions. Don't leave money on the table. And keep those wells a turn Bye. Good night. Bye.